This ball lives in my mind. It's when Kima Roach started a ball a mile outside Lake Stump and swung it to take Mark Stoneman's off. Other than the beautiful shape here, and it is a beautiful shape, this was around the time that Kima Roach's career comeback started. Because in Test Cricket so far, there have been three Kima Roaches. The first coming of Roach was Hell on Wheels. The early part of Roach's career, he bowled at over 90 miles an hour, got in close to the stumps, and quite often moved the ball both ways, in the air and sometimes off the pitch. That looked like a solid gold 400 wicket test bowler right there. And something pretty big was going to have to happen to stop that. And it did. Injuries. Fast bowling ones. And there was also a car accident. He flipped his car several times, which to me at least sounds pretty dramatic, and certainly had some head and neck injuries. But he tweeted soon after to say he was fine. And he has since downplayed the injury publicly. But it was used privately for a long time to say that was why he was struggling. But it's possible that that wasn't even the injury that changed everything for him. Before the car accident, he broke his shoulder on an Indian tour. A very uncommon occurrence for a fast bowler. But whether it was one of those two incidents, or something else, or a combination of everything, over a period of time, Roach changed what he was. But at his young, virile best, he was this. Because before Roach started getting injuries, he gave a few out. This is him against Jarks Callus, around the wicket, into his face, like a boss. This was brutal. But there's something even better. Roach once made Ricky Ponting retire hurt. Another fast short ball slammed into Ponting's arm, who actually tried to bat on before eventually having to be taken to hospital for the injury. Ricky Ponting doesn't retire hurt easily, and Roach sent him to hospital. This is the same Ricky Ponting getting hit in the face from a quick when he was batting with a cap on and continuing to bat. He was really one of the last players in our game to wear a cap regularly when facing quick bowling. And you can see here he gets hit hard on the chin and just goes about his innings. And we are talking about two of the best players of fast bowling ever. And Roach smacked one in the face and sent the other one to the x-ray machine. And just in case you've forgotten, Callis is third on the all-time run scorers list and Ponting is second. And both came from places where fast and short bowling was the norm. The point is that Kima Roach had serious heat at this point. And he had quite a few wickets. 85 of them at just under 28. And if you're new to cricket, you might be thinking, well, that doesn't sound that special. Well, from 2009 until his car accident, Roach had the 11th best average in the game. Which is pretty good when considering that no other West Indian was averaging better than 30. And the next best bowler was probably Shane Shillingford, who only played 16 tests before being called for an illegal action. And while Roach may look like a new ball killer these days, back then with the extra pace, he was at his best with the old ball. His numbers are very close to Dale Stane's in that period. And if you ever find your record anything like Dale Stane, you should consider it a life well lived. In one day cricket, he was not quite as effective, but still quite a good player. Anyone who can maintain a bowling average under 30 while going at less than five and over is doing pretty well. Essentially doing two jobs for one bowler. It's clear that the first Roach was pretty tasty. And if that was at his best, then we need to look at his worst for a moment because at times he was almost unplayable. And I don't mean unplayable in you couldn't get bad on ball. I mean, he was bad. In seven tests over 2015 and 2016, he took four wickets at 150. This is the period he was clearly in development, trying to match what he once did to what his body was allowing off from him now. For two years, Roach just looked broken and beaten and you wouldn't have bet on him coming back. Certainly not at this level. And you can see the impact on his body as he completely changed how he bowled. Crickvis's data suggested that over a few years, he went 30 centimeters wider on the crease. Although the data was still in its infancy when he started his career. So if you look at the gap between where he bowls now and where he was bowling in 2009, it looks closer to 60 than 30 centimeters. Roach told Sky in 2017 that him coming wider was a technical problem brought on by all the injuries. After I had sent them some videos to ask him the questions because it was quite clear that he was doing something very different. But it was also quite clear that he was starting to bowl pretty good. And from 2017 to now, we have what you call the final Kima Roach incarnation. Recently, another test player asked me if I thought Roach was a better bowler than Ian Bishop. And originally, I kind of laughed at him. Not least because peak Ian Bishop might have been the best West Indian quick, at least on paper. He combined Joel Garner's height with Annie Roberts' brain and Malcolm Marshall's swing. But we barely saw it. Because of chronic fast bowling injuries, he really played a lot of matches in a row. He came in and out, and over a decade, he really just didn't play that much. Even his 161 wickets at 24 seemed like an underachievement when you actually look at what he could do. You don't get bowlers that fast, that tall, with that much swing in the same body. But Ian Bishop managed to still have a pretty good career, and that's because even when parts of his game weren't working, there were so many parts that were good. Kemar Roach was probably as quick as Bishop, and he swung it just as much. 
but at a far lower release point. Not only is he just way shorter than Bishop, but he also falls over a little bit when he delivers. And when Indri slowed Bishop down, he was still massively tall. When they slowed Roach down, he was massively short. You can also see how correct Bishop was. He was very good at using the crease, but mostly he got him very close to the umpire. This was someone who could lose pace and be fine at test level. You wouldn't necessarily think the same of Kima Roach. A short, slow bowler coming from wide of the wicket is not exactly a dream package. And if he hadn't been so good in that early part of his career, I'm not sure the West Indies would have been in a rush to get him back, or at least given him as many chances to prove himself. Perhaps the big change was that as Roach and most fast bowlers in the game started pitching the ball up a meter fuller, it meant that he could hit the stumps a lot more. And around that same point, umpires stopped worrying about bowlers coming wide when they were giving out LBW, as Hawkeye had retrained them. And in this modern DRS world, coming from wide, being a short bowler who hits the stumps a lot is actually a really good skill. So that is how the new Roach has had success. And if you look at these different periods by the way that I've separated them, you would say he's been at his best for a very long time now. However, that first period was actually really tough for bowling, and the second was not. So despite averaging 27 compared to 24, he was actually better in that first period. I mean, he's clearly been great over the last few years, but so has almost all bowlers. And he was the 11th best bowler by average in that earlier era, and he's now the 16th. But the fact that he has been this good in two different eras as essentially two different bowlers is something remarkable on its own. And also, having a long-term career in the West Indies over the last decade should be nearly impossible, especially when you factor in all his injuries. But the interesting thing is that he doesn't just look like a different bowler, he actually is a different bowler. For instance, from 09 to 2014, Kimo Roach was absolutely terrible against left-handers. And by terrible, I mean he was the worst high-usage bowler against them in that period. And this is about as dramatic a turnaround as you can get. And part of this is because he used to swing the ball away more, and now he swings it in. In fact, according to CrickViz, he swings the ball away from left hand as the seventh most in tests. However, of those in front of him, five are left armers who are swinging it in their natural way. So of the right armers, only Ishant Sharma swings it further away from the southpaws. Of course, everyone is pretty good to lefties these days. So as much as Roach dominates them, he's still only the fifth best. Of course, if you cut out the two off spinners, he goes up to third. Although it is just worth looking for a moment at just how many people are dominating the southpaws in this era. But a part of that was down to so many right arm seam bowlers coming around the wicket to them. And Roach is one of the two bowlers to deliver over 2,000 deliveries around the wicket to lefties. Stuart Broad's the other. But despite having this huge number of deliveries bowled, he also has the highest percentage of around the wicket to left-handers of any right arm seam bowler. And this is in an age where almost every right arm seam bowler now comes around the wicket to left-handers. Tuscan Ahmed is the only right arm seam bowler with 250 balls to southpaws who hasn't bowled around the wicket once in this period. Also, Tuscan Ahmed averages 100 against them, so I think he should probably try it. Roach averages 21.23 coming around the wicket to lefties. And it's not just the cack handers, he's also changed how he dismisses the righties. He's now completely upped his LBW percentage against them compared to before. This is now just a completely different bowler from the first one we saw. And he's been outstanding in both parts of his career. The fact that he has ended up with the seventh most wickets in West Indies cricket is an extraordinary effort. And look at the names he would likely go past. Michael Holding and Joel Garner. And look at the names he's already gone past. Garfield Sobers and Wes Hall. Maybe if you're optimistic like me and you bought your Roach stock very early, you thought this was possible when he was young. But when his body fell apart, none of this seemed possible. It took him a couple of years to recreate himself. And then he came back as a slower, wider in-swing bowler and still managed to make it work. Kemar Roach doesn't break arms and smack jaws anymore, but he does break hearts and smack the stumps. It's different to the young Kemar Roach, but the old Kemar Roach is still pretty damn fantastic.